Mathematics is a precise and accurate science. It is useful in helping us solve problems and prove ideas and concepts. Did you know that the Bible provides mathematical evidence that shows that it is true and can be trusted? In this series of videos, we continue looking at the judgment from a mathematical perspective. We do this using Daniel and Revelation in the context of the three angels' message in Revelation chapter 14. These messages make up the core of the gospel of Jesus Christ and are the present truth for our time. If you want to review any of our previous videos, you can view them at sabbathschooldaily.com. Additionally, you can obtain the study guides for these lessons at sabbath.school or ssnet.org. Holy Father, thank you for the science of mathematics. Through it, you have provided evidence that your word is true. Give us a mind to trust and believe and use it as a guide for living our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. The prophecies found in Daniel and Revelation regarding the judgment provides the mathematic evidence that supports the idea that the word of God is true and can be trusted. The Holy Spirit gives specific mathematical proof to support this. When we compare the biblical mathematics formula to history, we can see the reliability of the Bible. This evidence is another reason for doing what is written. Paul in Romans 13, 11 through 12 says it best. Do this, knowing the time that it is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now salvation is nearer to us than when we believe. The night is almost gone and the day is near. Therefore, let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Several years ago, National Geographic's magazine told a story about a forest fire. The fire happened in Yellowstone National Park in the United States. After the fire ended, several park rangers went up a mountain to look at the damage from the fire. One park ranger found a bird burned to ashes next to the root of a tree. The sight of the bird made the ranger feel sick and upset. The ranger knocked over the bird's ashes with a stick. When the bird fell over, the ranger saw three baby birds under the mother's wings. The ranger was surprised at the extent to which the mother bird went to protect her babies from the fire. She carried them to the root of the tree. Then she hid them under her wings. She could have flown away, but she refused to leave her babies. Jesus' love is just like that. He loves us too much to abandon us to protect himself. This is evident at the cross. He allowed the fires of judgment to engulf him to protect us. At the cross, Jesus was judged as a condemned sinner who was die. Jesus died so that we could be judged as righteous before God and live in his eternal kingdom. Because of Jesus' death on the cross, we can be free from the everlasting fire. This fire will burn up all sin and everyone who refuses to accept God's mercy and forgiveness for their sins. There must be a judgment before Christ comes. Or how would God decide who should be destroyed and who will live in his eternal kingdom? But when does the judgment start? Keep watching this video. View day two, the cleansing of the sanctuary. In our previous lesson, we saw that God must do his work as judge before he comes. The first angel of Revelation 14 with a loud voice announces in Revelation 14, 7, the hour of his judgment has come. Interestingly, the book of Daniel tells us the timeline this judgment started. For instance, Daniel 8, 14 provides a specific timeline regarding when God will begin the cleansing of the sanctuary. And he said to me, for 2,000 
300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. To clearly understand what Daniel is saying, we need to know that the Jews in ancient Israel knew that the temple on earth was made clean on the day when God judged his people. This day was called the Day of Atonement, which was the Day of Judgment. They understood that this was a time when the earthly temple was cleansed of sin. Similarly, Daniel understood the teaching about God's work as judge. However, he was confused about the vision God gave him of the 2,300 days that we read about in Daniel 8.14. Daniel 8.27 and Daniel 9, 21 and 22 tells us Daniel's response to God showing him the vision and how God responded to him. Daniel 8, 27, Daniel responds to the vision. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick for days. Afterwards, I arose and went about the king's business. I was astonished by the vision, but no one understood it. Daniel 9, 21 through 22, God's response to Daniel. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. At the end of Daniel 8, we see that Daniel faints. Later, Daniel says, I was astonished by the vision, but no one understood it. The part of the dream Daniel is talking about in this vision is about the 2,300 days. Daniel didn't understand the time part of the dream. The angel already explained the rest of the dream to Daniel. We see that in Daniel 8, 19 through 22. And he said, look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation. For at the appointed time, the end shall be. The ram which you saw having the two horns, they are the kings of Meda and Persia. And the male goat? is the kingdom of Greece. The large horn that is between its eyes is the first king. As for the broken horn and the four that stood up in its place, four kingdoms shall rise out of that nation, but not with its power. Daniel is amazed by this prophetic timeline. Hence, God sends Gabriel to explain the vision to Daniel. So in Daniel 9, 22, in answer to Daniel's prayer, Gabriel says, O oh Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill and understanding. The angel Gabriel gave Daniel a continuous sequence of events that unfold in a single unbroken line, revealing the truth about the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. He gave the exact date of the beginning of his ministry and the time when he would die. What does this information reveal? It shows us that Jesus' death and God's work as judge are connected. In other words, Gabriel's explanation of the 2,300 days showed that Christ's death and judgment are inseparably linked. Daniel 9, 24 through 27 tells of Jesus' death. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make a reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome time. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the Prince 
who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood until the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abomination shall be one who make desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. Daniel's timeline shows that Jesus' death is connected with God's work as judge, mentioned in Daniel 8.14. Why is this relevant to us? Find out more about the timeline in our next video, Day 3, the 2300 and the End of Time.